hacking and the FBI. There was never a chance for the Hidden Fortress to triumph over the power of the Federal Bureau of Investigation of the United States of America. The FBI was huge and had the entire United States government behind it. The Hidden Fortress was just shy of 100 people and was spread across the globe. The FBI had endless resources and agents that it could dedicate to bring down the fortress. While the fortress only had pirated software and the ability to covertly connect computers over untraceable phone lines. Hacking was not going to get anyone out of the FBI's crosshairs. In the end, the hidden fortress elites within the United States were convicted of a multitude of crimes. The hidden fortress was shut down. The hidden fortress became a forgotten chapter in the rise of hackers controlling the world. And what of me and the hidden fortress and the FBI? The Federal Bureau of Investigation interviewed me for potential involvement and evidence. The FBI stated that logs from the Hacker Bulletin Board System BBS, of the Hidden Fortress showed download and upload service history and chat forums showed and proved that I was involved in criminal activity on the syndicated hacker Hidden Fortress. They stated they had a hard proof. My hacker handle was the Code Warrior. I was a frequent, if not daily, user of the Hidden Fortress to download and upload software and games illegally obtained and then distributed them further, which they said was a federal crime. I engaged in conspiracy to commit criminal enterprise, engaged in organized crime, piracy, and the distribution of intellectual property, all were federal crimes. The scope of my criminality, they said, was massive. Cross-country, domestic and international organized crime and conspiracy and piracy and distribution of pirated software. All, each and every one of them, federal crimes. I associated with known criminals, which of course, they admitted I may not have known at the time, but they said they were a syndicate on the Hidden Fortress, and that meant special laws applied. They also noted the anarchist nature of much of its content. They noted the ability to make homemade and untracked weapons and the blueprints for nuclear bombs. And they noted that I aided in their illegal enterprises the FBI's list of crimes felt rather excessive and trumped up to me. But of course, I did pirate software. That was all I did. But I even on the systems, on the bulletin board systems, in my chats, I told hackers that I did not agree with what they were doing, except for, of course, copying and sharing games. But they were hackers, and I was much more of a cracker. I cracked software. They hacked systems. The Hidden Fortress hackers intended to exploit their powers and improve their lives with them. Games were merely what started them off and kept them united. But they loved the thrill of hacking into a system that was designed to thwart them. That was their game. They were smarter. They would prove it. They wanted prestige and recognition for their greatness. They wanted to leverage their powers to obtain money, which they could then use to buy anything else they desired. I saw hackers had great capabilities, but they were also ultimately people as well. Hackers were susceptible to the same selfishness and greed and evil, just like anyone else. Once a hacker was in a system, they could do whatever they wanted. Cybersecurity was very weak back then. Protection was basically an unlisted phone number and a password. Hackers easily found hidden phone numbers by creating what they called phone scanners, access scanners, or auto dialers. They simply stepped through every phone number within a specified range of digits, and they listened for a computer modem to answer on the other end. Once a computer answered, the dialer 
would record that phone number, attempt a handshake and connection. With success, the dialer would hang up and report the telephone number was live. If it was not, of course it would state it was not live. The hacker would later be able to return to live numbers and investigate further, potentially breaking into a system where it protected, and see what there was available to pillage or to play. Years in the future, so-called secure systems with callbacks existed. The idea was people would register phone numbers that when they called these systems, they would call back only registered phone numbers. Callbacks were new and they were cumbersome to manage and required tech experts to set them up and maintain them. Consequently, callback systems were rarely implemented. Whenever a hacker hit a callback, they just moved on to the next target. There was always easier prey. For my would-be crimes of domestic and international conspiracy, engaging with organized crime and piracy, and associating and aiding known criminals, the FBI said that I faced decades of prison time, even though I was a kid. Seriously, I was a kid. I copied, shared, and played some games. Maybe even a lot of games. And now the FBI was telling me that my entire life was over. That was bull. It was BS. But what could I do? Fortunately, the FBI told me that I was a kid, and I was probably naive, and had ignorantly become embroiled in a criminal syndicate. They told me that I had no idea what I was doing was illegal, right? And they indicated that it was very likely I didn't fully understand that the Hidden Fortress and those actions were also bad. They effectively told me what I should be telling them should they ask me questions going forward. They obviously wanted me to incriminate the Hidden Fortress elites. Let me be really clear. The FBI appeared to be leading me, trying to get me to give evidence against the hacker elites of the Hidden Fortress. The FBI confirmed that my handle was the Code Warrior. They said they found many bulletin board system posts by the Code Warrior, me. They admitted that there were many discouragements against hacking banks and police stations and of targeting individuals for retribution. The FBI said that my posts showed my intent to not support illegality, and yet I still committed the crimes nonetheless. They told me they were not interested necessarily in pursuing me for legal and criminal violations. They just wanted me to understand and acknowledge that piracy and organized crime was illegal and that it cannot be pursued. And they wanted me available as a witness should it be necessary in their prosecution of the Hidden Fortress leaders and elites. Everything was overwhelming and scary. Of course, I agreed to do whatever the FBI told me to do. The Fortress fell that fateful FBI day because their hubris drove them to target someone that could rally forces to fight back. I never heard from the Hidden Fortress or anyone related to it again. I saw how technology was far more potent than any other things in the world. It gave power while letting you remain remote and unseen. You are a sniper of technology, low risk, high impact, high reward. It was obvious though, hacking could and would be used and abused for evil. And the world was not, and is still not, prepared for hackers. Hackers will control, if not own, the world. I am convinced. <laughs>